Hey, in this video, I thought we'd look at the model results that I got back, as well as the results from the Polywink service. First, we're going to look at the results that I got back from Dan Ulrich. You may remember Dan was the modeler that I engaged to help me build this model, and he sent me back this uh, ZBrush file, which you see here, uh, which I, I'm super happy with. I was really impressed at this kind of costume detail that he did. I didn't expect this. I mean, I described to him what I was interested in for the costume, and uh, but I didn't really picture it coming back quite as nice as it did. Uh, he also sent me a, a low-res Miocene file, which you can see here. And this has got um, nice topology at game res, ready for my rigging and setup in Unreal Engine. Uh, nice tidy file with everything named nicely. Almost immediately upon receiving this file, I took these head meshes and I sent them to the Polywink service. If you're not familiar with that service, this is their website here at polywink.com and you can upload your own character and they will make you a set of blend shapes for that character and the set could be either a full set of fact shapes a very complete set or you can do what i did which is the 52 blend shapes specifically for the ar kit type of motion now this includes two options you can have an fbx option which is just the blend shapes or you can have a maya option which includes the blend shapes uh, plus uh, animation puppet. Almost immediately I regretted sending that off to them because I saw some things that I thought I would like to update. Particularly these eyelashes I thought it would be better if they were more full and it could telegraph the blinking a little bit more clearly if they were more full. Other updates is I wanted to change how the UVs were laid out on these eyes. I quickly did those changes and uploaded the head again to the Polywink service because I saw that they hadn't engaged with my order yet. It was just sitting there in, in a queue, presumably. Now, unfortunately, they sent me back my original head and not the updated head. And I'm left trying to figure out how I can insert my updates into this result. This is it here, and it comes with everything nicely organized in groups. Uh, you can see here that there's a single combined mesh which comes back as a result, so this is an important consideration. All of your uh, various shading needs to be defined before you upload so that when it comes back you can have appropriate shading groups. Uh, you can see it in motion here with these nice controls. Everything set up more or less as you might expect. Here's some jaw motion. Here's the motion for the mouth. Overall, I was very happy with these results. Uh, even the blinking is really quite nice. So blinking with uh, oversized eyes, you can sometimes get penetration. And this, I think, came works pretty well. And now I'll show you those results in Unreal Engine. Now this is the FBX head just placed into the engine. Now I've already set up uh, my animation blueprint to receive the live link. I've already set up my live link application to have the IP address of my computer and I've confirmed that I can see my uh, iPad here. So just uh, to get that motion onto this head, I only need to identify the blueprint that I've set up and then set this to uh, update the animation in the editor which you can see here and now you can see some motion so this is uh, how it looks straight away with no calibration you can see I get some reasonable motion around the mouth but I looked into how I might update this with some of the kind of techniques that I saw other people doing with using uh, a kind of a calibration of these shapes now, the techniques that they shared included typing in uh, some blend shape names, a set of blend shape names, and I thought this was uh, going to be a kind of a pain in the ass, so I really wanted to see how this was done in the AR kit example with the Kite Boy. 
And when I did that, I saw that there was a function in there, and I basically just comp copied the struct and the function uh, right out of there and pasted it into my own project here, so I didn't have to type all these names out. And I thought, with this technique, maybe I can get all of the blend shapes that have some values and a neutral pose and use them to offset these values. And that's basically what I did. I found uh, this function here for editor offsets, and in my event graph, I just added a, a custom event and I made it call an editor, which exposed this button. Uh, and now if I make a, a neutral face and I hit this button, I'll get a bunch of values stored here in my struct that uh, are being used to offset these curves. And now in theory, I should get more improved motion, a little more accuracy maybe around the mouth and a little bit more, uh, you know, exaggerated motion or subtlety maybe you could say and I feel like I see that I think it's improved but one of the issues with this method is that there is no way for me to store these values uh, or at least I couldn't figure out a way to store these values and then reapply them easily to the motion that I would have recorded so the motion that you're going to record in this example uh, I think most often would be the the iPad uh, live link source motion directly and then in order to produce these results I would need to have those values that I that I'm using stored and reapplied to this uh, source motion and I, I couldn't figure out an elegant way to do that but thankfully I don't need to figure out an elegant way to do that because this has all been worked out by the team at Epic Games in 4.27 which was great to see that the iPhone app itself has been updated to take this into account one of the things that I'm slightly disappointed at is the amount of eye motion. I don't really get enough of that, so I may look into improving that. The nose scrunch, not much happens with the nose scrunch. So you can see I'm scrunching my nose here, but not really getting much result. Uh, so I may do some further improvements to see if I can get a little bit more extreme nose scrunch and also eyebrows could probably go a little bit further brow down doesn't really go down very far so I may look at um, tweaking these blend shapes but in general uh, I'm pretty happy and with that I'm gonna wrap up this video thanks for joining me and see you next time